This is the Bolex camera. It is a 16 millimeter film camera. Uh, it does not have batteries. It is a wind camera. This video is going to take you through the basic controls and then there will be a second video for loading it. So this is the handle for winding. It's hooked in right there. We unhook, flip that up and it engages right there. And then you wind it counterclockwise. You cannot break it, you cannot overwind it. So just go until it stops. And once you do a whole wind, and then it hooks right back in there. Once you do a whole wind, that will give you about 30 seconds at 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second is going to be the standard uh, for normal speed. The controls for the speed for this camera are right here. It does do different speeds. It goes all the way down to eight frames per second, up to 64, and you do that just by rotating, and you can actually put it anywhere in between. Remember that when you change the speed of the camera, it is going to affect exposure, and you need to change where you're looking on the light meter. 24 frames per second is where you're going to do most of your filming. Whenever the camera is empty or you are loading it, it should be 24 or below. It shouldn't be above that because the gears will just sort of spin and wear out quickly. Uh, so right here, important is our frames per second. How we make the camera go is two different ways. One, there is just a button right there. And when I press that, it goes. As you can tell, it's a loud camera. This is why we're not going to do sound with it. Uh, this, as we press in, we see it goes there also. I can also run it continuously by locking it in and then going to stop. If I go this direction, it's going to do single frame. So if you want to do any sort of animation, pixelation, anything like that, you can do single frame that way. Uh, as we continue up this side, we have this thing I and T. I is intermittent. T stands for timed. T is like bulb on a digital SLR. It'll hold the shutter open for as long as you hold it. Uh, we don't want to do that. Occasionally you might do that, but even if you're doing animation, you probably will not need it. So most of the time, you just want to check that it's on I for normal filming. As we continue up, there's a little line here that is marking the film plane. Where is the film actually going through the camera? So if you are measuring for very precise depth of field and focus, measure to that line, not to the end of the lens. You can see that there's a four inch difference there. You know, that, that can be a huge, huge difference when you have very narrow depth of field. So that is where you measure when you're dealing with focus. As we continue up, here is your uh, frame counter. If you were doing single frame, you can see you can count how many frames and not lose track of that, and this will reset it. Right. Um, that's just if you're doing something very precise. If you just want to know how much you've shot, you come over here to the footage counter. You can see here it's at 15. It counts up. From zero, from zero to a hundred, so it will count up. Uh, the only other thing on this side is this little lever here, right? This releases the motor and disengages it. You would do this if you wanted to rewind the camera, rewind the film, so you do a double exposure or something like that in camera. Most of the time we don't do a lot of that anymore since we can do it in editing. But we have to be aware that it is only engaged if it's up. Sometimes when people are shooting, it gets pushed down and the camera stops. And that's because the motor is no longer engaged. Double check if you're ever having problems. First thing is that this should always be up. These deal with the viewing system, which I will show you in a minute. But I want to come over here to the lenses. In some of the cameras that you take out, we have a few different varieties and made different years. Some of them will have a lever here that is called the variable shutter. When it's up, the shutter is all the way open. 
and its normal exposure. When it's all the way down, the shutter is closed and no light is coming through. Again, if you wanted to do an in-camera dissolve or fade in and fade out, that's what you would use that for. It can also be used to cut down on the amount of light if you have too much light and you can cut it down by a stop or two or closed. But for normal filming, make sure it's all the way up. As we move back around to the front, we hit the lenses. There are different, we, again, we have different models available at Media Services. There are a few that have a turret and they have three prime lenses. Those are the prime lens cameras. Uh, if you want to change from a wide angle to a normal lens to a long lens, you're going to have to move the turret around. Try to remember to use the turret handle and not grab onto the lenses. As we do that and we move that around, it becomes apparent that this is the taking lens. The lens that is in front of this right here is the one that's going to be hitting the film. People kind of often will occasionally think it's the top lens, right? Because that's the one that's closest to you on the side where you're working. The taking lens is this one here. So when you're adjusting your focus and your f-stop, make sure that it is that lens in this position. Right? And as we move this around, we can see where the light path is gonna go. This is called um, <coughs> your filter holder. There are filter, smaller filters like this in the box if you have neutral density to cut down on the light, or if you wanted to use colored gels or something, you would use those. Uh, even if you're not using a neutral density filter, make sure that there is a filter, in, filter holder in there because when it's out, light can sneak in there and fog your film. The other thing that we can see when I turn that around to reveal it is the prism. And remember for this viewing system, it's a prism viewing system. Light is gonna go through the lens and a very small amount of it is going to be bounced up to the eyepiece. And that's that prism there. You don't need to touch that. I'm just showing it to you. All right, and we'll just zoom this around on every lens you're going to have a f-stop right. and focus controls right so these here this one here is your focus and and oops it's on and then here is our f-stop the f-stops will be those f-stops that I taught you back in 371, 284, 56, 16, 22. So you will do focus and f-stop every single shot. If we come back around on this side, you can see the door off and zoop. We do that and the whole thing's come off. Remember that this is the inside of the camera, so when you put it down, put it this side up, you don't want it to get scratched, you don't want stuff in there because that's gonna get in your camera. So put it down like that on a table. We will come back to the inside of the camera for loading. But we put it back on and hold it, make sure it's still, and then it's steady. And now we wanna come back and look at the viewing system. The viewing system, and as we saw the prism, light comes through the lens. Most of it goes through to the inside of the camera to expose the film, but a little of it will go through that prism, bounce up to a mirror, come through to your eyepiece. So there's just a couple of controls that we need to deal with. One is focusing the eyepiece to your eye, so that whether you have good eyes or bad eyes, you, the focus, you will be able to look in the eyepiece and it will be accurate to what the camera is seeing. So here is the eyepiece. The, they will be different depending on the model that you get. Some of them has have two controls right here. Some of them just have one here. But this will focus the eyepiece. There's a little piece of ground glass right here that as you move this, it moves back and forth. So to <clears throat> focus the eyepiece that each operator needs to do, 
with this kind of camera, the easiest thing to do is just completely move all the lenses out of the way. If you have the zoom lens, uh, the zoom model, just zoom it all the way in, totally defocus it because we're not trying to look at an image when we're focusing the eyepiece. We're just trying to make this piece of glass focused. So once you open it all up like that, then you're just going to adjust this uh, and move it back and forth. And the way you... I can't see anything. It's sock. It's, it's dark. It's very dark. I, I told everybody that I needed quiet. I, I, um, the re it's broken. It, I think it's broken. Can I take it back? It is not broken, it Sock. It is broken. It, it is not, and it, please be careful with the Sock. What? The reason you can't see is the baffles up. Now the light is coming up from the lens for you to see it, but if your eye isn't there, it's going to come down and fog the film. So unless your eye's up there, you have that baffle up. Uh, now what happens? Ah, I see a shoe. No, you don't. It's the... Oh, nah. <laughs> Bye. All right. Sock. Okay. Go, go talk to spam. Sock. Uh, the baffle is down. Light's coming through. Baffle's up. Light's not coming through. When we're focusing the eyepiece, again, let just let straight light come through. Move this back and forth. A little piece of glass in there is going to move back and forth. When the, when it looks the grains look focused to you, then you're good. Then you put it back. You're ready to go. And then again, if you have the zoom lens, you just zoom it all the way out. Like focus on like a cloud or a white wall or something. When you're focusing the eyepiece, you're just making this piece of ground glass uh, appropriate for your eye. After that, what you see is going to be what the lens is seeing. So if the lens is out of focus, it's going to look out of focus to you. If it's in focus, it will look focused to you. And again, with this eyepiece, we use it to judge uh, focus, depth of field, framing. All of those things will be exactly what the camera is seeing. Do not use it to judge exposure. Trust your light meter. Your light meter will tell you what the exposure should be and don't make adjustments based on what you're, th you're seeing through the eye because you know, all the light is not coming to your eye, only a small portion. Right. Uh, socks interruptions notwithstanding, I think we uh, got through it all and you can review this if you need and move on to the next one which will take you through loading.